Take a look around. Where are you? In class? At your desk? In an office? Now look up. What do you see? Chances are you see a ceiling, but what's on that ceiling? A fan? A light? All of these come from an energy source far away through miles and miles of power lines that eventually reach the power plant. Your typical power plant might look like this. These power plants release harmful gases as they burn fossil fuels, and these gases contribute to global warming, the rise in the world's atmospheric temperature, which has dangerous impacts on the way that we live and the environment we live in. Given this problem, government officials have been encouraging renewable energy options like solar and wind. But how does the government encourage consumers to purchase alternative energy technology when it requires purchasing expensive devices to actually extract this energy from nature? Well, the U.S. government created the Solar Investment Tax Credit to aid consumers in purchasing renewable energy technology. So it works like this. You pay a chunk of money to purchase technology that essentially gives you free energy after installation. Now, if you're a wealthy upper middle class American, this sounds like a great investment. But for all others, it is a much needed yet missed opportunity. Then does the feasibility of government incentives depend on your socioeconomic background? Let's look into what specific government incentives for solar panels entail and how much they can actually lower the cost. Basically, through the solar tax credit, you get to pay less taxes by purchasing solar technology to provide your home with renewable energy. But how much will my taxes be lowered, you may ask? In fact, your taxes could be reduced by as much as 30% of the cost of your panels, depending on your state of residency. Granted, your residence is owned, not rented. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on a sec. So if you can't afford to buy a home, solar incentives aren't even available to you in the slightest. Even for middle-class individuals, solar incentives may not be enough. The upfront cost might be unaffordable and the system might not pay for itself over time. A 5 kilowatt system initially costs around $25,000 without incentives and would generate around $75 a month in electricity bills. This would take 27 years to pay back the initial cost of the system, but with a 30% tax deduction, the system would cost $18,000 and the payback would only take 19 years. However, in reality, $18,000 is a lot of money. If you make $100,000 a year, the cost of the system would be around one-fifth of your annual income, yet only 18% of households make above hundred grand. Not to mention, most individuals would take out a loan to purchase their panels, so the present worth cost of the system would be affected by a nominal interest rate of, say, 10% over maybe 10 years. Then the cost of the system would be around $29,000, not even including the annual maintenance and repair. If we take a utilitarian ethical standpoint, the action that produces the greatest good for the greatest amount of people should be the most ethical choice. In the case of implementing incentives for solar panels, the current method is inadequate. Whether or not those who can afford solar panels choose to buy them, they still have that ability. Though costs of the solar panels can be reduced, individuals of lower socioeconomic classes are either unable to purchase the panels because that would require them to prioritize alternative energy over their basic necessities like food and shelter, or because they don't even have the homes in the first place. This is completely unethical because it is entirely biased towards the upper class. The current incentive system doesn't produce the greatest amount of good for the most people. In fact, it favors the minority, those who have the luxury to purchase unnecessary commodities instead of those who would benefit from cheaper electricity. However, the current incentive program is beneficial in that currently its impact on the U.S. budget is minimal. Additional incentives would harm the government by increasing the U.S. debt. More needs to be done for individuals of lower socioeconomic backgrounds. In some places, this has become a reality. Two engineers in California decided that there was no reason that solar electricity was only available to big businesses. So, they created a company that installs solar electric systems for lower income families called Grid Alternatives. Over the past six years, with the help of SunPower, a manufacturer of high efficiency solar panels and solar systems, these companies have installed more than 1,700 solar electric systems for low income families, equating to nearly 148,000 tons of greenhouse gas emissions. But this is just one not for profit organization in California. While they continue to benefit those in need, shouldn't people in power be doing more to help increase the solar opportunities for those who can't afford it? This supplement is just scratching the surface to what our government could do if we encouraged it. Overall, yes, government incentives definitely encourage consumers to purchase solar panels. They relieve the upfront costs and often entice consumers to purchase solar who wouldn't consider it otherwise. But often, these incentives are just not enough, and there are still a lot of people out there that could use a little bit more help. It is not ethical that only the wealthy can afford solar energy. Perhaps the most feasible solution to this issue of biased incentives towards the upper class is to create a more distributed incentive program where the amount allotted to consumers is dependent on their income and assets. An even better solution would be if the government supported and funded groups like Grid Alternatives and SunPower. These kinds of programs could make an even larger impact with the right funding and availability. Evidently, there is no right or wrong answer to this dilemma, and the ethics are complicated. However, it is clear that renewable energy is crucial in energy development, and that more needs to be done so that individuals of lower socioeconomic statuses can have the option to purchase solar.